Workforce Development Coordinator for the Chamber. Um, and I work with the Business to Business Committee to do the breakfast forums, which we do once a month. Um, and this morning, we have invited Jack Dugan to share what he's up to, as you can see on the board, what we've done. Um, Jack needs no introduction. He's He is well known to all of you. And it, is this your 20th year? It is. It's the 20th year of being at um, Manhattan Economic <laughs> Development. <laughs> walk around town you see all the hidden treasures that Jack has had his thumbprint on. So with no further ado. Thanks. We're going to, uh, we're going to talk about some of those hidden treasures. Sometimes my board thinks we they hide our involvement a little too much, right? Bill, but, um, but yeah, I've been here 20 years. It seems like just uh, yesterday. But, uh, a lot has changed and the Adnock Economic Development Corporation has, I, I think, accomplished a lot and I think we have a lot left to do. Over the next uh, over the next decade, um, to give you a little background about um, an ad hoc economic development corporation, I, I know some of you know this story, but um, I'll try to keep it a little brief. But but it was created in, in 1985, and what happened was a group of local business people got together and they realized that there hadn't been any new manufacturing companies recruited to Keene for a decade or two, and there's no really affordable, developable. Uh, industrial land. So they formed an entity called uh, a private for profit entity, 501c3, called the Keene Industrial Development Corporation. And um, and then they went to the city of Keene at that point and said uh, this would be a good group to help out the city and help create jobs and broaden the tax base and will you help fund it. And to their credit back then, the city stepped up and said, yeah, we will, to the tune of uh, $40,000. And they went off to the Chamber of Commerce and they were able to get a commitment from chamber for about, I think, 7000 7500 and, um, and I think the Keene Downtown Housing Corporation actually contributed a, a relatively small amount too at that point, and, um, and they were off and running. So again, with their focus almost entirely on industrial development at that point. And um, it was a, um, uh, a, a difficult um, introduction of the organization. Um, but the executive director at that time did, did a nice job creating some visibility, had a couple of success stories and, and moved on. There was a subsequent director and then I came in 91. And, um, and I had the benefit of, of working in economic development in, in Massachusetts um, prior to moving to Keene for about 15 years. So I had a little bit of background. But I worked at the state level in Massachusetts. And so I was the guy who brought businesses from away to a local community, to a local region, and handed them over to the local guy and said, see what you can do with these people. And never really got that satisfaction of, of you know, bringing them right to the bricks and mortars and seeing the people working with the companies and seeing the transformation that's possible when you have an effective um, local economic development crew. So I had a really good board at that time. We had 15 people on my board. Uh, as Nick Bill O'Meara is my current chairman, so be kind. Um, and um, and I had a very uh, uh, supportive and aggressive board at that time. And they said, um, you know, maybe we could kind of broaden the mission a little bit, extend beyond the bounds of Keene and look at Cheshire County. And, and we did. And we had a couple of success stories. We developed a little industrial park down the end of the Pierford Road off of Winchester Street. And, um, and we, we, we made loans to a number of businesses throughout the region. And then, um, Let's see, probably, time flies, but boy, ten, probably 10, 12, maybe 15 years ago, downtown saw in rapid succession, downtown Keene saw in rapid succession, uh, Sears go out, Woolworths go out, Hoodno go out, and the Colonial Theater was on its last legs. And um, the board, again, kind of reacting to the community's input and as residents of the area, their own interests too. <coughs> So that we should broaden our mission yet again to include downtown revitalization. And, um, and we, we stepped right up, and, and I've taught everything I've read and everything I've learned over all those years in economic development, it's what you do when you go into a downtown is you take the worst piece of crap, and you, you, you buy it, you turn it around, you fix it up, and you fill it up, and then you move to the second worst piece of crap, and the third person, you keep, you keep moving through your downtown. And the first worst piece of crap, um, it was the old Sears building. 
many of you probably remember um, the baby blue facade <laughs> right in front of a block right on Central Square um, where they, owing to, I guess, uh, that it is in New England, Sears elected to put kind of like a colonial motif type wooden frame across the top of the thing. Um, but it was ugly and it was empty and you got more wet inside than you did outside when it was raining. It was just an awful shape. So we bought it, uh, we renovated it, we, we broke it up into rather than one big use and some really, really derelict apartments. We broke it up into a number of different uses, uh, filled the building up, renovated the apartments, and we went on to our next one. And we did march up and down Main Street. Um, we went from there, I think, uh, we participated in a tax credit project to raise money for the Colonial Theater. Um, and through us, a couple million dollars uh, flowed into the Colonial Theater renovation project. Uh, we went over to the um, to the Woolworths building. And again, another another masterpiece of downtown. The, the, the um, I don't know what you call it, cheap hell that was, but a very, very ugly building. And uh, took that empty building, put a new front on it, renovated the inside, same thing, broke it up into mixed uses, which is again what the city was asking us to do. That as we were doing these projects, we started making small loans to businesses up and down Main Street to either induce them to come to Main Street or to keep them happy and healthy on Main Street. Uh, we jumped over to the Goodnow Block, uh, which is where the uh, Blaine Hotel is, and we're going to talk about that as far as what, uh, <coughs> what, we're, what we're doing. <laughs> Sorry, I, gotta, I, I can't move my hands or he's going to push the lot. <laughs> And, and co-developed the Eber Mill and Railroad Street with Southwest Community Services. And uh, anyway, I'm, I'm going to lose track of all the different projects, but we invested um, literally millions of dollars <coughs> downtown and made um, literally millions of dollars of loans to businesses to, to succeed in downtown. And I'm going to talk about <coughs> some of our more recent efforts about there. Now, while we were working in downtown, we also we also tackled that issue about the lack of affordable, developable land in Keene, and we went out to West Keene off Route 12, where the Blackbrook Corporate Park was, and um, we actually bought up a couple of lots out there, significant tracts of land, and then worked in partnership with the City of Keene uh, through a tax and financing district to bring the necessary uh, services to, um, to that site so we could develop it as a corporate park. And, um, and and I think when you uh, drive up Route 12 or have an opportunity to drive off Route 12 into the interior of the park, you can see we're, we're pretty successful in, in not only helping some, some uh, already existing businesses like Smith's, or Sims, or Concord Cortex, or whatever they call these days, to expand dramatically at Blackwood Corporate Park. But over time, we, we recruited companies, additional companies like, um, like uh, Janos Technologies, um, and, uh, and CNS through the park as well. Um, CNS's first floor in the King was a building that we actually built at the corporate park, the 60,000 square foot building, which where the headquarters building is now. And over time, the park grew to employ probably about, it's probably about 1,800, maybe 2,000 people working out in the corporate park right now. And, um, and there's very few land sites left, and as we speak, there's one empty building, which unfortunately is a long-time tenant of the park that we recruited way, way back at the beginning called Interpact, was bought uh, about six months ago by a much larger company and closed out. So we have an empty 20,000 square foot building. And um, if you know anybody, the telephone number is uh, 352. <laughs> 39 extension 111, so please get in touch with me. So, um, and again, what, uh, as we developed at Blackwork, we reached out into the region and um, uh, we bought some property on Walpole. Uh, we owned some property over in Peterborough. And again, we made dozens of loans to manufacturing companies throughout the region to help them either expand their buildings or buy new equipment or sometimes just for work in town. So, um, so that's what we've done. And uh, a lot of new taxes being generated, a lot of, a lot of jobs are being created. And what we are doing. <laughs> um, uh, 
Yeah, we're not big at PowerPoint. You like that? We're not big at PowerPoint in the Nadnock Economic Development Corporation. And Samantha will have this. Is, by the way, there's a staff of four, including me. Um, it's myself, uh, Bob Elliott, who's our CFO. Uh, Matt Holy in the back of the room runs all our properties and helps him with development. And Samantha Wilhelm, um, who does just about everything else, including make PowerPoints. And this was her first effort to make a PowerPoint. And I think the way is she discovered the special effects button. <laughs> <laughs> so um, so what, what we're doing now is, is 51. Uh, this is an example of what we're doing now. And we, we've actually just completed this building although there's a little bit of a storefront right here that's, that's still available in the building. <coughs> Besides that one little storefront, which is, which is only about seven or 800 square feet, yeah. 800 square feet, close, um, close. There's, uh, there's a couple of three bedroom residential condominiums actually right here and here that are still available. The rest of the building is, is, uh, is filled and, and, um, and sold. And, um, now what it is, is it's, uh, it's 51 Railroad Street, just off east of Main Street. It's the first building that you see when you drive down um, Railroad Street. And this and this is part of a much, much bigger project that I'll, I'll, I'll show you the plan later on, which we call Railroad Land Development. And the railroad land was about a seven or eight acre parcel of land on the east side that the, that the city bought from the Boston and Main Railroad 25, 30 years ago when rail service was stopped to this area. And it kind of it kind of stayed there, unused and non-tax producing, non um, no, no jobs being created there. Uh, there was a dirt pot and a lot of it probably some of you are still able to promote me ripping out and maybe relocate, but we'll see what we can do about that. Um, but we stepped up with the city with a plan and offered to buy the property. Um, and the city uh, uh, chose our design, which included a number of mixed-use uh, buildings that we're, that we're in the process of building now. This um, happened to be one of the first. So we developed this. Um, our offices have relocated We're right here in the corner right here, now right on the first floor. And, and it has eight residential condominium units, and like four three-bedrooms and four two-bedrooms. And as I mentioned, Nancy's done a nice job. She sold six out of the eight. She's working hard to sell the last two as well. We've had some interest lately in the last two, which is great. Uh, the one retail space, and the other tenants include, as I mentioned, us. On this corner is a, a company I'll talk about in a little while called Fast Rose. And in the back of the building is where uh, Nicola's Restaurant relocated. To. Mm -hmm. Oh, oh! Um, well, the first picture, real quick, there it goes, is uh, when you walk into the front lobby of 51 Railroad Street, turn to your left, and, and there we are. And um, we're glad to be there. We, we actually used to be on Central Square up above, well, in, in the old CS building, a beautiful view of Central Square. I don't have the view out my window as so much as I used to, but, um, but maybe I'm a little more productive as a result. Um, so that's, um, that's our corporate office. <coughs> I mentioned also in the building, this is uh, Nicola's. Uh, they think they did a beautiful job designing the space and fitting it out. I hope many of you have had the opportunity to, to get there. It's, um, I think it's much better laid out than the space they were in on, on Winter Street. And um, while they actually technically don't have that much more square footage, it, it seems like it's it's bigger. And, uh, and uh, anyway, it came out nice and they've been very, very successful here so far. Um, you can see this This is actually the south side of the building, which is a big glass wall. Again, we'll talk about that in a little while, but it looks out over a courtyard we'll be building uh, this summer. And there'll be outside dining with the coals, too, which is a nice touch, which they haven't been able to do before. Um, second, second floor, um, Cheshire Medical Center Dermatology Clinic. Um, they, they uh, to their credit, they're, they're moving a lot of their activities in, into downtown between the, the uh, uh, west side of the center of Keene and into the second floor of 51 Railroad Street. And um, this, this whole development is condominiumized, by the way. So, so these folks, uh, the medical center, uh, bought the entire second floor of 51 Railroad Street and built out this, this uh, beautiful, beautiful office space and expanded in practice. Um, 
with a, a, at least one, maybe even two of the and so on. Yeah. Yeah. This is um, one of the one of the remaining three bedrooms, and um, and uh, this this if you would stood right here and looked this way, you have a beautiful view out of Railroad Square and out across Main Street looking towards West King. And um, Ann Scully was the architect of this building and uh, did a nice job. And um, so if anybody's interested, call Nancy <laughs> for me at 392. <laughs> <laughs> so the next building down on Railroad Street, a new addition to the railroad land was the Coit. Oh, you had like area. Um, so it's uh, 100 rooms. Um, you can read. Most of you have been in there. A lot of meeting rooms. Um, I didn't know the swimming pool was actually a salt water pool. I guess that had something to do with the Leeds designation. I guess it's a Leeds silver designation. So it's an environmentally friendly building. And um, what they did is they actually, they're the only ones in the whole development that actually bought dirt from. So everybody else buys their rights, or development rights, if you will, because of the type of financing necessary to build a building like this, a hotel, that had all the dirt. So they, they basically own the dirt directly under their building, and then they buy into services and parking and the rest of the condominium development. Um, but what's, 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 there's so many, so many neat things about this. I guess the, the first thing is, is these hotel developers have built dozens and dozens of hotels, and they are just thrilled to be doing business in this is, um, they've, been, they've been averaging something along the lines of 90% occupancy in this hotel. There was, it was, uh, was certain segments in the fall where they went um, literally weeks without the vacancy. Um, it's, just been, it's just been spectacularly received here. And, um, and the other neat thing is, is, that it's, is that all those people, all those rooms and all those people who are going to these functions, um, spending their money in key, um, because my office is sitting right here between them and Main Street, and every night, 5.30, 6, 6 o'clock, 6.30, what you'll see is these groups of people, you can tell they're from away because they're kind of like wandering around like this, and they're, but they're heading towards Main Street. And you know why they go? They're, 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 they're shopping in our stores and they're eating in our restaurants, so I think it's been a great addition um, to uh, Downtown. Now these same developers are so impressed with Keen that um, that they're looking forward to some additional projects too, which I'll, I'll talk about in a few minutes. Um, this building is is actually a uh, a senior housing building for folks 55 and older who meet so uh, certain income eligible criteria. It was developed on the railroad land by the Southwest services and we sold them the rights and of course we built out some of the infrastructure to support them and they did a beautiful job it's a very attractive building for downtown in fact when this building was going out a lot of people mistook it for, for the merit they thought this was the hotel um, but i know this one's full um, and um, a beautiful building it represents an investment i think in the neighborhood of five million dollars or so in downtown um, i probably should back up a little bit but 51 railroad street it's about a $10 million investment. This is about $5 million investment. The hotel is about a $13 million investment. <laughs> now, this, um, that's a uh, loading dock. But, <laughs> but they have a nice logo. This is, um, this is first course. Many of you know them as a culinary arts uh, training facility. It's also, um, as we consider it to be on the railroad land, it's the small little warehouse section of what used to be the right silver polish building on the south side of the railroad land. And as we were developing the raw land site that we bought from the city, the opportunity presented itself for us to step up and expand the railroad land um, uh, by, by purchasing the right silver polish building. They had sold off their uh, recipes and, uh, and closed down. So we, uh, we bought the building. We broke it into two condominiums. The smaller one, about 5,000 square feet, we now lease to first course. And um, and I 
guess we don't have a picture of the other one. But the other one, and the biggest one, is <coughs> the brick pot of the right silver polish building we sold to Southwest Community Services, and they invested several million dollars and uh, renovated it, turned what was a silver silver polish manufacturing company into an office uh, for their uh, for their employees, and they have they have well over 100 employees in downtown now, and um, and also uh, a few head start uh, classrooms as well, and. Um, and probably um, one of the, the most exciting, uh, relatively new additions to, to the railroad land is um, is what we hope to do this uh, this spring, and that's and that's uh, break ground on a new building for the Madnock Community Market, which will be our our, uh, our local food co-op. And um, uh, this was back in December, and it said nearly a hundred co-ops support us, but I think there are around five hundred. And um, I think the goal is, is to have 700 members by the time we break ground in the spring, and about 1,000 by the time we're done following spring. And um, it's kind of blurry, but you can see the mayor right there, right, right in the middle. <laughs> Thank you, mayor, for your support. And, um, and usually, if you look for the guy with the biggest head, it's me. That's me back there. Um, but anyway. Um, this, this site is right up on uh, right up on uh, Cypress Street, so it'll have great visibility on how to access and parking, and uh, again creating new jobs and getting more people downtown with money in your pocket, which is um, which is the important thing. This actually is a uh, for what it's worth. <laughs> this actually is a draft floor plan of, of how the food co-op would uh, would lay out. Um, you'll see a plan in a little bit, but see this curved wall um, will add the third leg to the, the to the Marriott and 51 Railroad Street to kind of start to enclose this courtyard area with the bike path will flow through. Uh, the main entrance is, is right here and you can see it's got deli counters and all kinds of neat stuff. It's going to be a great addition and, um, and it's going to have some, some outside dining as well. They're going to have a, a little cafe there. Street, Railroad Street, 51 Railroad, Marriott Hotel, Food Co-op. Um, this is the courtyard that we'll build. Uh, you can probably make out a funny little shape right there. What that represents is the, the, the change in elevation from this side of the courtyard to this requires several steps. So what we're going to do is we're going to take advantage of that and kind of build up a little stage area too. So you know, we could have outside um, entertainment functions right in the middle of this courtyard in downtown. Uh, the bike path, the pedestrian path, points right through the middle of the whole thing. Um, so it, it'll, it'll get, it should connect people from, from further east and keen and west and keen as well. And um, as we continue to develop the railroad land, uh, we're, we're, still, we're still kind of messing around with this design right here. We, we, we have a couple of interested commercial tenants Yet again, another new building there, and um, what we're trying to figure out is how to get rid of that little parking, parking garage. Um, and and um, what that would allow us to do is make a bigger footprint of the building and keep a little more green space as you walk through the middle of the site. Um, where we are definitely going, though, again up on Cypress Street, is this long skinny thing here represents a, 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 the next phase of, of bringing some additional market rate housing to downtown. Uh, we're going to be building another condominium development there, more um, as opposed to the slightly, um, slightly um, upscale um, nature of the, of the condominiums at 51 Railroad Street. This would be more market rate, sitting right on the Cypress Street. And I don't know whether it's next year or the year after the city has a plan to redevelop Cypress and Eagle Court to make it look a little more like Main Street. It'll have the sidewalks and have the trees and have the lanterns, so it'll be a nice location and obviously very accessible to downtown. Um, what behind this, this building, um, right now we have approval for is yet again some additional parking because everybody wants parking. Um, but what this can actually shows is the possibility of a multi-story parking garage. Again, hit from Cypress Street and attached to this building that can serve not only the residents of this building, but everybody else in the development and anybody who visits Main Street. 
Um, this is Southwest Community Services. This is Burris Willis. This is Keene Senior Housing. And last but not least, we own this little lot down here on the uh, southwestern <coughs> section of the railroad land, and we don't have a user for that yet, but I think we can, we can fit in one more small bill with maybe 5,000 square feet. So, stay tuned. You ain't seen nothing yet. There's the new courthouse. <laughs> um, so, what, what, what we do next is um, we won't be building a courthouse for what the state's going to pay us to look like that. But, but uh, what, what we do have on the drawing board, um, in addition to the, the things I already mentioned, like the first course and the additional housing that we're going to bring to downtown. Uh, some really exciting projects. Um, uh, the courthouse is one. The, um, uh, the district court currently is located in City Hall. The Superior Court is on Winter Street, and um, neither of them are adequate. So they were being threatened with um, like decertification, but I know that's not the uh, I know that's not the correct term. Um, and uh, so the state decided that what they would do is they would they would move them out of Kenya, at least most of the operations out of Kenya. And that, that would be such a shame. But from an economic development point of view, because there's so many law offices in downtown, it's, it's a secret library there. Uh, <coughs> and there's a lot of people that work there, and those people buy lunch and shop on Main Street. And um, and Kenya is the county seat. And it just would be a shame if the courts weren't working in the county seat. So um, Senator Kelly and um, Doug Green, who's a local lawyer, formed a committee to save the courts, keep the courts in downtown. And they, they did a lot of groundwork with the state to the point where they got the state to agree that um, if, if you can build us a new building and you can limit the rent on that new building, $450,000 a year, and that rent includes heat, electricity, and taxes, uh, any expenses for running a building, then you know what, we'll give you a break, we'll stay in downtown Kenya. And that's, that's, a, that's a difficult thing when you realize that the specifications that they laid out for the court had, had to create about a 40,000 square foot building um, with, with several new courtrooms space for the sheriff, so on and so forth. It, it's almost an impossible task. But we were very fortunate that, um, um, again, working through the committee, um, MEDC is, is very familiar with the, um, the tax credit program, the seldom used tax credit program that the federal government office called the New Markets Tax Credit. And where it's available is in only available to help economic development and low-income census tracts. And um, it just so happens that in Cheshire County, Winchester is a low-income census tract, Hinsdale is a low-income census tract, and then this little skinny stretch of just the west side of Main Street in Central Square in Keene is a low-income census tract. Um, just be just be equal. Like just barely is good enough to get the market's tax credits. And what the tax credits represent is 39% um, of the total project. So as we are building a, uh, almost a $12 million courthouse just to the west of Central Square, actually on the parking lot that's on Winter Street now, um, we're able to uh, uh, obtain those tax credits, sell them for equity, and then in some creative financing uh, with some help from the city, County and actually some money that MEDC is putting into the project too. Um, we were able to sign a lease and get governor and council approval uh, in December to build a, a brand new beautiful courthouse this summer on, on uh, Winter Street. So we're very excited about that. We'll keep it in downtown. And um, so that's one of the places that, that, that we're going to um, over next year. Uh, we're also we also have a very exciting initiative that. Um, called Fast Roads, I, I mentioned that earlier. Fast Roads uh, is a, um, a wholly owned subsidiary of MEDC. 
and it's located at 51 Railroad Street 2, and it was, and it has a separate board of directors. Um, and it was set up to bring um, basically unlimited broadband access to Southwest New Hampshire. Um, what it involves is <coughs> building what they call a fiber optic backbone that will stretch from Hanover Lebanon area all the way down the Connecticut River Valley, and as it comes down the valley, it goes in very, very strange directions, and the reason for that is that it will connect to what are known as important community institutions like town halls, libraries, hospitals, and so on and so forth. And, but as it winds its way through the area, it also creates, I think it's every 1,500 feet or so, is what's known as off-ramps. So that the possibility over the next decade is from those off-ramps, communities like the one I live in, Dublin, can um, actually join the internet age. Um, we can actually connect to unlimited, unlimited broadband. Um, and um, it's, it's, a, it's part of an overall um, UNH project where UNH is working in the other part of the state and we're set up a separate, separate entity over here. But again, I think over the next few years, I, I think you'll see access to the internet increase dramatically um, in Keene and, and actually even as importantly in places like Dublin and Harrisville and, and some of the outlying communities. So we're in fiber optics. Um, Another project I think you'll see us developing over the next couple of years, or at least working uh, towards the, the, the redevelopment of, is, is Gilbo Avenue. Um, it was a community charrette uh, held uh, last fall where folks in the community discussed what they like, as far as public spaces, what they'd like to see on Gilbo Avenue to connect the mills with downtown. Again, with, we're expanding the railroad land going east, let's fill in the blanks going west. And um, so that, that information is now being kind of taken into consideration and kind of integrated into some new building development, proposed new building development on Avenue. And um, we have a long ways to go, um, including gaining access to the site since, quite frankly, the Grange owns most of the land on both sides of Gilbo Avenue. But they have, you know, they have expressed a willingness to, to work with us, and um, parking is key to them. And uh, when it's all over, they want to make sure they have as much parking as they have now. So we have a work cut out for us, but again, this is the possibility of, of projects ranging from uh, a new civic center, some new housing, some new retail space, expansion of the Colonial Theater, and I know even Antioch was interested in relocating uh, closer to downtown sometime in the next few years. So. Um, those are the biggest brick and mortar projects I think I will be undertaking over the next um, over the next year or so. Um, we're, we're also getting back to some of our roots to make loans to businesses that are growing. Um, we're, we're looking in light of the fact that community development block grant may be, may be disappearing. Uh, at least it's proposed in the president's budget. And, and by the way, railroad land would not have happened without a community development block grant. Blackbrook would not have happened without a community development block grant. Sears building, Woolworths building, Good No Block would not have happened without a community development block grant. Um, anyway, if it goes away, we, we, we're already starting to get ahead of the curve. Um, and uh, what we're trying to do is, is, is formulate a, what's known as a small business investment corporation for the region, which would involve the ability for us to, to loan and or invest money in, in growing businesses, again, in anticipation of block grant being on our toolbox. So, um, overall, oh, you know what I forgot? EF Lane. <laughs> Just thought of that. Um, I'm sure you, you all can see this very well. But, uh, and I guess to go, to go along with this, it should probably be my like this. <laughs> um, but, um, but anyway, this, this, is, um, this is the EF Lane. Um, EF Lane was um, EF Lane was um, a block that we bought maybe a decade ago uh, when the good nose went out, and we made loans to several businesses within EF Lane that were still existing to relocate and keep them downtown. Uh, Church in Maine was one. Um, Prime Rose was another, for example. Um, then we ended up with a big empty building, and we uh, put out an RFP for hotel development. We wanted to make it a small boutique-type hotel on Main Street. 
and uh, an entity called uh, Some Places Different Hospitality Group stepped up, and um, and they at that point owned in uh, about maybe 20 smaller hotels across the northeast and dipping down the east and seaboard. And they presented us with a plan of what they would do to the Good No Block, and so we, we actually participated in some of the some of the lending. And uh, they went in there and renovated the property, and it, it, it went it went pretty well for a while. But um, but over time, some places different um, uh, didn't didn't do so well, and uh, they started selling off their properties. And um, maybe as recently as a couple of years ago, I think some places different hospitality group was down to maybe two, three hotels. There's one in Ontario, uh, this one, and I think they still own one over on the seacoast. They ultimately sold that, so it was basically down to the EF lane and uh, one in Ontario. And um, and without without the critical mass to, 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 to market, to, to guess, to, to reach out, to get, get reservations, um, it got really tough on them. And they struggled. And they stopped paying the bank with first mortgage, and they stopped paying us at the second mortgage. And um, so, um, Rather than let the property go um, to to whatever we didn't know what use, uh, we stepped up at the commercial auction for the EF Lane, and uh, and we bought it. And um, we bought it last uh, December, December, yeah, December, I guess. And um, and and in anticipation of the commercial auction. Um, we went to the developers of the Marriott, because they obviously know what they're doing. We said, do you have any interest in working with us on this thing? And they said, they, they said, yeah, we would, based on the success we've seen so far in Keen, um, based on the fact this could this could add a, a different level of rooms for them, and it could also act, quite frankly, as a spillover, because the Marriott is sold out so many times. Um, what they did is they agreed that if we won the auction, that they would immediately take control of the property and lease it from us. And while they lease it from us, they'll put in well in excess of a million and a half dollars to, to renovate it. And um, so, um, amazingly, that's what happened. And uh, I went to my first commercial auction, which I guess is good news, there haven't been too many commercial auctions. And then you ever been to a commercial auction? The guy doesn't. The guy doesn't go doo 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 like a like a CMT, but it's pretty close. And I swear to God, I did it against myself <laughs> at least two or three times during the, during the course of the auction. But anyway, we ended up we ended up buying the property. They, the uh, hotel developers from Marriott kept it open um, until about maybe three weeks ago, I guess. And then they closed it. And what's going on in the interior now is some, some interior demolition. And. Um, and they're really going to transform the place, which is really neat. This is, this again, you really can't see this that good, but this is the now shot, this is the after shot. And what they're going to do on the inside is, this is the main entrance now. Um, what they're going to do is they're going to make this into kind of separate it back into two buildings, like it, like it originally was. So there'll still be an entrance here, but it'll, it'll enter into a commercial use that will be on the left-hand side. And as they go back into the building where the lobby on the other lane is now, they're going to blow that all out. So it's going to be wide open on, the, on, on this side of the building, probably all the way back to the bar and then the kitchen behind the bar. And they already have a tenant lined up. And that tenant will be going in there shortly to start to fit out of the space. Then they're going to take the hotel lobby and they're going to go over to this side of the building where usually you see these curtains are drawn. It's a, it's a funky little room, hotel room meeting space now. And they're going to blow all that out too. And what they're going to do is create uh, a brand new, much more visible, much more bright hotel lobby with a separate entrance right here on the corner of Church Street and uh, Main Street. They're going to put in some new steps and a handicap accessible ramp. And I think they did a nice job of maintaining the uh, historic uh, storefront of the building. So there'll still be um, 40 rooms. They'll all be renovated and, and uh, upgraded. All new furniture, fixtures, and equipment. Uh, a new lobby, nice new big tenant, and lots of people on Main Street, and we'll bring in even more people to Main Street. And uh, it's going to all be done by June, and then they're going to buy the building from us. We'll get out of the hotel business. <laughs> um, and, uh, and move on to 
with some of those other exciting projects that I spoke of. So that's what MEDC has been and uh, what we're doing and where we're going. Thank you. Uh, 
So that's what's going on at the middle school and subject to the vote in, in March. And then the, and then the YMCA. Um, Jeff, we just listed the YMCA for three ninety nine nine. So if anybody has any buyers, um, at this <laughs> point, <laughs> <laughs> at this point, the uh, developer of the middle school is not going to proceed with purchasing the YMCA because as you said they don't know what they're going to do with that building yet so they don't know what they would need that or not so so it is, it is for sale the property is basically the building right this yes. land yeah. goes with it um, uh, <laughs> <laughs> we could figure out something yeah, okay. we figure out something but um, it's funny when you look at the YMCA from um, Roxbury Street. Uh, I remember being there with one of the former directors of the YMCA looking at the building, trying to figure out what to do with it. And and he was looking at the like the new section where the racquetball courts were and stuff, and looking at it and going, Yeah, but you could do this, you could do that. And I was looking at the old brick pot and going, Yeah, but you could do this. <laughs> so we weren't uh, quite quite that. Not, I don't know how it's for sale, but we'll see what happens. Anybody else? Anybody else? Anybody else? Uh, MEDC, one of the, the mission of MEDC, it's a nonprofit, so we're not getting into projects looking to make tons of money. Uh, we try to sustain ourselves, um, mostly successfully. Um, but, but our mission is to go in and find projects that need doing that are not doable by a for-profit um, entity. We're a taxable entity, not profit, but we're taxable. The courthouse that Jack alluded to um, is, a, is an instance where the current facility is not taxable, but the new facility will be taxable. Um, and in, in that way, we, we add not only structures, but um, activity and, and the flow of money um, to, the, to the area. Uh, the co-op is, is an exciting example. Um, also a nonprofit, but but the end result is going to be raising the votes for everyone and increasing that tax flow and, and that uh, financial um, opportunity. So that's that's something that we do. Jack alluded to uh, block grants. We of the state's block grants, what percentage do we get from the NI? Most. Yeah. 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 I, I work you know, for the county in France. So. Yeah. You guys do great. No, it's Mananoc, anything this side of Temple Mountain, as far as the rest of the state's concerned, is, doesn't exist. Uh, um, and to capture two thirds of the resources available to the state and use them wisely um, is a testament to what Jack does. He's being on his board, it's, you sometimes just kick back and shake your head because it's like being with a magician. Because he does great things with us. Uh, Even he's kind. He's not his best <laughs> We should say my best friend and I close to us. But, um, but I, I, I'm sorry, i got to run. <coughs> Oddly enough, I've got to go. Well, maybe coincidentally, to what you're talking about. I'm off to Goffstown now to meet with the Hillsborough County Commissioners because we're trying to get a block grant to help um, renovate the corner of 101 and 202 in Peterborough with that abandoned gas station that sat there um, in awful shape for many, many years. And so I've got an appointment to try to convince them to kind of call them. So I don't know if I'm wrong. But anyway, but thank you. evaluation forms um, scattered about. Please fill one out and if you've got ideas or things that you'd like to hear in the breakfast forms, make sure you indicate it on there. Um, as you probably know, next Saturday, a week from this Saturday, is um, Keen Ice and Snow. Um, it will be an all-day event. We've got about, I don't know, 15, 18 carvers coming to Keen to, to do ice carving among all the other activities. It's free, um, so please pass that on to everybody you know. Um, on this Friday, we have a health forum 
um, with a discussion with Lisa Kaplan Howe, who is uh, works for the State Insurance Department, and they're going to talk about uh, small business um, and how it how it uh, shows up in the health reform measures. Um, on April 1st, we're going to have a workshop, which I haven't even named yet. I don't know what it's going to be called. But um, basically, if you're in the sandwich generation and you're dealing with elderly uh, parents and children, um, this will be a workshop on what are the resources and what do I need, what questions do I need to ask to get those, um, those difficult issues dealt with. The annual raffle tickets are on sale. Our annual raffle is May 6th. Um, here at Bentley Commons down at the other end. Um, see any of our board members for a raffle ticket, and if, if you uh, can't grab a board member, call the office. Buy it, buy it before April 1st, and there's an additional drawing for 50-50 um, meals at good restaurants. I want to thank Bill Reed from Eastern Video, standing in the back, who videotapes these and then makes sure that Channel 8 gets them. Um, I want to make sure everybody in this room has joined the food co-op. Bonnie is here if you need to talk with her. Um, it's, a, it's an amazing investment of 200 bucks to get you, get this community where it needs to go in, the, in that next step. Um, and I want to thank Bentley Commons. Once again, Patrick, thank you for all you do to help us out here.